Hi, my name is Liam from Bottles in Providence, Rhode Island. We take special care in curating everything in our store, and we especially enjoy supporting our local distilleries, breweries, and wineries. Recently, we paid a visit to Sons of Liberty Spirits Company in North Kingston, Rhode Island, where we met with owner and distiller Mike Rapucci. Mike gave us a behind-the-scenes tour of the distillery, where we learned how they make their great single malt whiskeys. We really believe Made in America needs to come back. We've got to start actually producing some stuff here. And so when we thought about it, we're like, dude, the Sons of Liberty, we're like, forget this. I want to stand up for what I believe in, and I want to change. And then we got to start the American Revolution. We thought it was so fitting that we named our distillery Sons of Liberty. And the first product is called Uprising, because we like to say every revolution starts with an uprising. So why not launch the stout beer turn into whiskey and call it Uprising? Whiskey is um, basically it's spirit distilled from grain. Yeah. So bourbon is a corn whiskey. Most people don't know bourbon is a corn whiskey. Right. And then single malt whiskey is what we're talking about. So yeah. that's malt whiskey. So all, all, all whiskey, barley. Barley. all barley, yeah. all the time. Exactly. Yeah. So, so for malt whiskey, we're unique because we use these darker malts. Mm -hmm. For American whiskey, we're unique because we use malted barley mm -hmm. and the dark malts. So that's kind of different. People think American whiskey is like bourbon. Yeah. So we mill those grains into this thing over here. And this is the mashed water. So on water, you mill the grains in 148, convert the starch to sugar. You let that convert. After that conversion, you drain it off. We do a double infusion. So what that means is you actually drain it all the way out, then put warm water back on it. So you put it at about 165 degrees, 168 degrees, because you want to strip the sugar. Yeah. So basically, you're making a sweet, sweet, sticky, dark soup. Exactly. So then from here, what we do is we pump it over. It comes in and comes into here. So this is the first one. So you see, it's actually got that small layer on, but you can see how hard it is. So that's just sugary water uh, happening right now. If you want to look over here, this is, we pitched the yeast in this one yesterday. So that's a real active fermentation. Yep. But if you take care, like in these steps, you get an awesome flavor through the still instead of having to chuck a ton of bulk on it and let that do the work for you. So that was kind of what we did. So six days of fermentation. It's done. Pumped down, it's done, everything settles out. Yeah. You've got, you've got a, basically a 10% alcohol by volume. Fruit. Yeah, exactly. We do, and then we go into the still. You go from the 9 or 10 percent beer to 35, yeah, between 30 and 40. It's people like, you put a still here, but you got a light whiskey, it doesn't make any sense. But you're like, dude, it comes off the still, like White Dog or Moonshine, that's where the name came from. And then the oak is where Uprising gets its color. We wanted to be a stout beer distilled into whiskey, so we wanted it to be a whiskey. We wanted you to taste that chocolate or coffee note. Alcohol boils about 190, water is about 212, as you know. So when you heat this up, if you have something that's 10% alcohol and then a simple pasta, you'll boil closer in the 200s because it's not much alcohol. So those, comp those compounds start coming off at 190. And so it's coming off it's going to boil and the vapor is rise. Yeah, yeah. And so if I don't engage that any of those trays in the column, the vapors just rise up with the water, the sugar, uh, and the coloring compounds stay. So those hot vapors come in, hits the cold coils in that condensing unit, and brings it back to a liquid. And so it comes down this thing, and now that's out here, and down through here. So we put it in a barrel, but we finish it on these oak stave. So if you think of a barrel being made, it shoots fire on the inside, and that heat, like the creme brulee, if you have the gun on it, it goes from like nice golden, and you look away to black. So that beautiful golden caramel flavors are inside the barrel. So as the heat would dissipate in. So what they did is they said, they got big convection ovens, and they said, okay, well, let's replicate that heat as it dissipates into the barrel so that you can have an even palate experience and you can taste the different layers of the barrel. The other thing that most people don't realize is in the U.S. we have to use newly charred American oak barrels to be newly charred. But Scotch, they reuse bourbon barrels. So a lot of that char, that vanilla and caramel is already taken out of the barrel. So that's why, you know, a bourbon is like five years and some scotch are 12, 15, because they don't have as much of that new barrel vanilla and caramel yeah. use. So yeah. we got a 64 degree temperature differential here. Uh, and Scotland is like 30, so how far am I pushing in and how much am I extracting out? So by using newer barrels, increasing the surface area to volume ratio a little bit, not going nuts on it, and uh, aging it in a climate where you get more interaction, you can have amazing whiskey in a shorter amount of time. We quit our job just to do what we love and to make a life that we, we wanted. 
I wanted and everyone you know here wanted to do. And that's what Sons of Liberty did. They took a chance and said, forget this, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of being taxed, I'm sick of that. I want to do and live my life that I want. So that's really more of why we did Sons of Liberty. Also keep a lookout for their special winter release, a barrel-aged pumpkin spiced whiskey made from local pumpkins. It has a smooth and subtle pumpkin spice profile perfect for the coming season.